So Joe, could you show us how it actually works? Yeah, so I'm going to demonstrate the rCloud feature. So um, we're going to use a tablet that's actually uh, 4G enabled, so I'm actually ha connected to the internet right now. And this is my account, so I can see all of the tests that I've done. And what you can actually do is scroll across uh, the tests, so I can pick one that I wanted and see the results, or I can actually do another test. So this is where we're at today. And I did a few tests here already, um, and I can actually uh, see the results for one of my tests. Or I can actually just add another test to, uh, to this location. So at the bottom, I'll uh, select uh, Add a Test. And it's asking again if I want to do a blower door or duct test. We're going to do a duct test uh, out here, and uh, we're going to do uh, Title 24. I can also use the ResNet or the IEC standard. So we're going to do a Title 24. And it's a single point test. And I can actually enter a compliance uh, information here. Usually the user will kind of know what this number is. We're going to just say it's a 65 CFM result. And I'll go to the next screen. And so I've already done tests here, so I'm doing like an additional test, or maybe it's a test out. And uh, I'm going to enter a few things. It actually went to my location and already got the local weather and uh, wind speed. And I'm going to enter the indoor temperature, which we'll say it's 68. And I'm going to confirm where I'm at. So I know I'm at uh, on the map. And I can also do uh, get location. And it also confirms whether or not I'm near the actual address, because the address and the geolocation are two separate items, actually. So now it tells me how far away I am from this known address. So I have all the information I need for the... Uh, the test, and now I'm going to connect to a gauge. I'm already connected to the gauge I have over here by the duct tester, and I want to make sure that everything is set up. So um, I do make sure everything is, you know, uh, sealed off and everything is connected. And on the duct tester itself, so I can make sure that I have the right range, right? So when I come over to the duct tester, I have the option of pressurizing or depressurizing. So I also can change ranges by popping one plug out and it's starting another one. So this goes from the 74 millimeter to the 47. For my test, I'm gonna always start with the 74, and I'm gonna start by uh, depressurizing. So there's nothing to change in terms of all my tubing. I can actually just spin it around and connect the flex duct. And that's a nice quick canaler, and we're ready to go. So everything's ready, we're depressurizing. I know that I have the right uh, range inside so I can change my ranges here, and it also will change the gauge. I know I'm going to be on 74, but if I did have 47, the gauge is already changing. So I'm going to select 74. And I'm connected. I have everything I need. So the next step is to go to the test results and begin the test. So that was the quick connect connection that you used on the back? That's right. It allows me just to flip the fan around and actually reconnect it to the other side almost instantly. That's great. Okay, so I'm on the duct tester um, uh, uh, test uh, the page, and uh, uh, it's asking me to make sure everything's ready, and I'm going to start the test. So you don't have to touch it at this point? No, in fact, you really can't actually interfere with the gauge anymore. I can't change the gauge uh, settings. I can't uh, either even stop or start it, because they really want to make sure that you've isolated yourself from being able to change the results. So the gauge is actually communicating directly with my tablet, and it's uh, officially running the test. So I'm waiting for it to get up to 25. It may, uh, especially if you're doing a video, it feels like it takes a long time to get there, uh, but the test goes fairly quick. So uh, as that's happening, I want to make sure that everything is uh, connected or we have all of our settings correct and um, uh, waiting for us to get, reach our test pressure. We're just over 20. And it does take a few seconds to get there, but we will definitely be able to achieve our test pressure and, um, and get there. So I know that I'm almost close. One of some of the great features that I'm getting here is that I, I know that my results will be able to be documented and sent to the cloud, and I can share them with anybody, including my uh, building official, HVC contractor, uh, provider, any of those kind of folks will be able to uh, see the results as soon as I'm done. So it sounds like you're trying to increase the confidence in the system, removing human error. Uh, indeed, it does, and uh, in justify that I feel uh, secure that this data was actually acquired at this job site and uh, unaltered. Yeah. Okay, so we actually have the test going through and it's following the parameters for Title 24. And uh, you can see it's going through. It's a, a 10 point test for so many seconds per uh, time that it acquires it. Uh, it gives me an average when it's done. 
and uh, that's how quick it was. So the test goes fairly quick. If I'm looking for any outliers or for some reason one of my uh, uh, covers fell off on my uh, registers, I could see an outlier here and I can just re literally redo the test. I can see my results at the bottom where it says if I passed or fail. So it actually says that I failed. So I'm looking over here and seeing that I have a much larger leakage than I expected. So what I can now do is actually uh, go around and see if there's something that wasn't connected right. Maybe one of my um, covers or my uh, grill mask has slipped off someplace and can correct that and redo the test. So but it does tell me before I've left and gone home to find out, oh, I've actually failed. So that's one of the great things about that. So I'll re I can reconfigure it, repass it, and everything will be great. So uh, I'm going to assume that we redid the test for uh, time's sake. And the next stage, actually, I can see the report. So I can see the results that are here based on the building information, the test conditions, my outside temperature, and the measurements. <laughs> and once I know this is for sure what I want, or again, I can go back and redo the test, I'm going to actually hit submit. And we'll just call this um, simple uh, CA uh, test number two. All right, and I'm going to submit that. And what it's doing now, because it's online, it's able to go and um, upload this to a cloud storage. Submit and save. So now it's moving up to the cloud storage. And once I get the confirmation, then I know that all my information is now secure on the cloud in terms of being uh, documented and stored. And anybody online can actually now uh, log on to my account, like somebody back at the office, see the results and confirm. So before I left, they can say, oh, yes, Joe, you're, you, these are the exact results we needed, or we need to redo the test. Um, it's going to refresh itself on my main homepage, and I also have access to that exact same data. So again, we saw this field or this uh, page at the beginning. So if I click on the location, you can see the last test we did was called uh, CA2. Here's my results again. And I can share those with anybody by, by, via email or see it on a map. So it gives me a lot of options that we're always looking for in the field uh, in terms of compliance or sharing your results before I left the job site. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. That's an excellent demonstration of your new system. I think it'll be the future of how we uh, test. So I appreciate your time today. Thanks a lot, Brandon. Thank you.